Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rechakwadash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings upon salutation to you, elect Akyam, across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 100. A psalm of praise. Make a joyful noise unto Yahweh, all ye lands. Serve Yahweh with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that Yahweh, he is a God. It is he that made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people in the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For Yahweh is good. Mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. I wanted to read that through the Spirit as I was um, doing some reading. And um, what really stood out when you really go in this song, this prayer that's being um, praised unto the Lord, is the fact that King David mentioned in the second verse, it says, Serve the Lord with gladness. Okay. Now, the first verse says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, right? And ultimately, in the end all, be all state, when the kingdom of heaven is established on the earth, that's going to take place. But it's going to start from somewhere, and his men are going to be making that joyful noise unto him. That's why it's considered as a song in the scriptures. All right? Songs are supposed to be a delightful sound unto you. And once we sing this song or give praise unto the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, all right, he likens that unto serving him. And again, the ones that are going to be serving him right now are the men that are kicking his truth, all right, starting with the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. One down, okay? It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing, Right? So this is how you make a joyful noise in the Lord. This is what the joyful noise is. All right. I'm sorry. The joyful noise. Serving it with gladness. Coming before his presence with singing. And what are you singing? You're singing the new song. All right. A tune that nobody's familiar with except for particular un in or in ordinary mortals. All right. It says, know ye that Yahweh. He is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So why not serve him? Look what he's done to you. Look what he's done to us as a nation. All right. Yeah, you look at Israel today. You look at the state Jake is in and they're in a very low dogged out state. But at the end of the day, it was written to be such. But since we understand the end all be all. All right, we know that Jacob's going to wake up, but the bless the amount of blessings that he had bestowed among Israel, and of course starting with the elect, all right, that's enough to praise him for. All right, just to the fact that he made heaven and he made earth, he made the oceans, he made everything that you could perceive, your thoughts. All right, literally everything. He's omnipotent. So if that's the case, and if we believe in that, why why not sing the song unto him? Why not want to do the work? All right. And when I say do the work, we understand that's preaching the gospel, but doing the things that he had told us to do. All right. But of course, more importantly, confessing, which is the start of that. Looking at everything he's done, he's given you the spirit. You didn't have the spirit. You, you didn't you didn't just say I'm going to have the spirit today and it's given. He chose to do that. He chose to still have it in yours and your mind to believe in his truth and serve him. Especially since we know the benefits that are involved in that he could have taken that away just five minutes ago. So going back to the point, why not serve him? Like it was written in verse three. When you go into serving, matter of fact, I'm going to pull this word up here in verse two. 
The word is abad. And it says to work, to serve, to labor, to work, do work, right? To serve, to be worked, to be tilled. All right. So we understand it. It says to work. It also says to cause, to serve as subjects. Right. And we understand that we are subjects unto the Lord. Right. So think of it. Think of it like this. Think of it like this. Yahweh Shai is within your presence right now. He's in your presence right now. You will be more than willing to be like, Lord, may I get you some water? Lord, are you hungry? Lord, can I get your coat? Can I do this, right? Everybody who believes, who's listening, will without a doubt be like, yeah, please, Lord. Even when you go into other ancient cultures or cultures in general, for example, I mean, you can't look at Israel and think of it, but when you go to certain halal restaurants or when you just study different cultures in their history, when it came to people in rulership that sat down for a supper or whatever, they would sit on their throne and every single different person would come up there with smiles on their face, bearing them gifts, giving them that, being more than happy, being more, more than happy to, to uh, take their hat. Or whatever the case is. Take the cup away from them. They did it with joy. With joy. That's a carnal example. I'm using that as an example of to how it is to serve the Lord. Putting your mind state in with, with that joy that you see. He deserves it more than anything. Psalms 104. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless him. Why? Because he is. That's why. And it doesn't only mean just saying it just with your mouth, but showing it within your actions openly. All right. Constantly thankful. It says be thankful unto him. I got a precept real quick. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2. We give thanks to the Most High always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. All right? And then there's another scripture I believe was in Fest for, uh, let's see. Let's see here. I can't think of it right off the head right now, but it's in a Thessalonians and it goes into pretty much always being in the state of giving thanks. All right. Even when we go through turmoil, tough times, always finding that benefit laid in, in secret somewhere within that, that he has there for us. Giving thanks is part of the gospel. When you read it in Revelation, the 14th chapter, and it talks about those different angels that are pouring the gospel unto the servants, preaching the gospel, letting them know the destruction that's coming to this place, literally, literally sending down or pouring down the word of the most high unto us. Right. Going into that right afterward, it goes into pretty much how we're going to suffer and the servants or the saints that are being patient with the Lord. All right. So going to the point, being thankful even when we suffer because there's going to be a great reward with it. Right? Let's see, going back to where I left off at. In Psalms 100. It says, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. That's why it's important for us to serve the Lord. Going back to the original point. That's the joyful noise that's pleasing to the ears of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Serving him. All right. Submitting yourself. Literally doing what he asks us to do. That's pleasing unto him. 
Lowering this edifying, I know it's late. Just wanted to go into that. All right, want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Rakakwadash, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and much salutation to you, like Akim, across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word of sincerity and the truth. Shalom.